All right. So let's do this. I, I just got five or six text messages from people uh, saying, Hey, did you know the Red Wings made a trade? Yeah. Yeah. I'm kind of in on this. Uh, <laughs> and everybody's asking what I think. So I was like, Oh, I'll just make a video. Why not? Let's throw it on the site. Um, so Nick Letty got traded to the Red Wings uh, from the Islanders for Richard Ponick and a second round pick. Um, Ponick, I think it's 50% uh, Detroit's retaining salary on him. And my initial reaction was, uh, what? <laughs> Trying to figure out, like, what are we doing here? Um, because it seems like, obviously, Detroit's in a rebuild. And I'm going, why are they, you know, grabbing Nick Letty? Now, I had to do a quick peek and see that, oh, he's 30 years old, left-hand defenseman. I mean, he, he's been around for a second because he was he started pretty early with Chicago. And um, I like him as a player. But I was kind of wondering, well, why are we giving up a second round pick and retaining salary in what is a technically a cap dump for the Islanders? Because if we look at the Islanders drafts, <laughs> their situation here, I mean, I can pull it up. Let's check this out. Looking at these guys, they got some issues. And we're looking at 8.5 million cap space. Cap friendly was all over this trade. They already updated it. So you see Richard Ponick right here. Um, he's already on the, on the Islanders roster. Um, the Islanders are in a little bit of a pickle here because even looking at that eight and a half million, you got to look down at the, at the guys that they need to sign. Um, Beauvalier, he's going to get a raise and he's going to get a decent chunk of that eight mil, right? Dal Cole, Maybe he'll get a couple million as well. Then do you want Sezikis back? Probably. He's on your third, fourth line, but is he going to get that much? I mean, probably not. I don't really mean to click on that, so let's just go back. Um, and then Palmieri and Zajac, they got picked up at the deadline. You know, is that something where you go, I want to keep these guys, or are you going to let them go? Because it depends on what they want. I mean, they're not going to be making what they were, so maybe you let these guys walk. And then in their, their defense here, Adam Pellick, he's 26. So he's going to get a little bit of a raise too. And then, you know, Braden Cobra and Andy Green, they're both older. Looking at net, like, okay, Corey Schneider's probably gone. They're going to have to pay Sorokin a little bit. He's going to get a bridge deal. So, you know, it's not, it's not something where it's easily like, oh, can I fit eight mil under that? You can't make any other trades deal. What I think they're going to have to do is they're going to have to make a deal with Seattle to force the Kraken to take Josh Bailey you know, take away this $5 million contract, this cap hit and, and get rid of it. Or maybe buy out Leo Komarov. Remember when he was an all-star? Like what the hell was that about? Um, so you look at Richard Ponick, like he's still an NHL or he's going to be on their like third, fourth line, uh, you know, one and a half million now because of the, the salary retention. Uh, but looking at their defense. So I went, okay, they got rid of Nick Letty. Why'd they do that? Well, Pollock, Dobson, Mayfield, Aho. That's your four right there. Those are your guys. You're going to sign Pellick. Now you're looking at guys that are 26, 28, you know, 25 years old. And then you got Dobson's 21. A lot of young core there that obviously they're a very good team. They made the playoffs. They went into, I think it was the second, third round. They almost made the Stanley Cup final, right? Tampa Bay knocked them out. Very talented team, young group, keep them together. Um, you know, Looking at this, I think they're going to probably let go of Coburn or Green, one of the two. They're not going to get both of them back unless they take like league minimum. Um, but I guess the one thing would be, okay, is Nick Letty expendable? I guess they are thinking, yeah, he is. Um, you know, or did they want to give up these other guys? Well, probably not. And I mean, the only one that's making money is Pollock and he's worth it. So not to say that Nick Letty's not worth five mil. He's got the same contract as Pollock. Why wouldn't you just move the older guy? Um, so now I understand this. Now this is a great trade for New York because they've saved some money. They've got a draft pick and they got a player back. Who's just going to fill a hole because you need guys on your team to play. And we'll get to this. Cause you look at the Red Wings now and, uh, it seems, I think this is the pick that Detroit gave up. This is this Edmonton one. Yeah. The Sam Gagne Athens CU trade. That's what I thought. Yeah, so looking at the Red Wings, I mean, look at this, this turnover. We haven't looked at this for a while, but uh, they only have five forwards under contract. And it, it, honestly, it's your it's your top six other than Brana. That's your top six right there. And then on defense, you know, you know, you see Nick Letty here. Um, 
you got Letty, DeKaiser, and Stetcher are the only ones really signed right now. Are you going to re-sign Hronik? Yeah. Are you going to re-sign Lindstrom if he doesn't get picked in the expansion draft? Um, Biega, kind of who cares? Mark Stahl, in my opinion, he shouldn't be back, but they probably will. Um, and Chalowski as well. I mean, he might get picked in the expansion draft too. Detroit has uh, 40, <laughs> 44 million in cap space after this trade. So it's not like they're hurting, but at the same time, they're going to have to fill out a team. So when I looked at this and went, well, why are they giving up a pick and you know retaining salary to get Nick Letty? It was pretty simple. You got a left-hand shot defenseman who has some talent. He's going to play top minutes for you. And he's probably going to be pretty effective and have a guy like that. That's just 30 years old. It's not like he's 39. He's 30. You know, I'm 30. I'm over my prime though. I think if I got to be really honest with you. So maybe Nick Letty is too, if I'm just going off of me, but I don't know if I can do that. But now you, you think about, well, Detroit only has 10 guys under contract. Look at this. You know, um, a lot of these UFAs, I don't know if they're going to come, you know, you might get Bobby Ryan for a year, Sam Gagne. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't mind him coming back. Phil Pula, he should be gone. Glenn Denninghelm, you know, see you later. You can find replacements for them. And then Ernie, Verana, Sveshnikov, Rasmussen, Brome is probably going to leave. Like you're going to resign those guys. Um, same with your, your defense. We just went over that. Your RFAs, all they're usually all the RFAs are going to sign, but you still have to fill out a team if you're going to get rid of all these unrestricted guys so if you have to really look at this they might be looking at this going you know what they're probably going to take Chalosky so we're going to have Letty to Kaiser Stetcher Hronik as our four we'll have Gustav Lindstrom as like our sixth seventh defenseman do we bring back Mark Stahl like without Letty you really don't have that much there and I mean you're trying to build it so that you are competitive you know, is this team going to make the playoffs? No, but you know, it's something where you want to still be competitive. You need to build towards that. You want to get better every year and you're not just going to go out and sign 13 free agents, you know? So this is something where maybe Eisman said, I've got three second round picks at one point you have to start spending, right? If you have your fun coupons, you got to cash them in eventually. So this might be one of those times where he went, I have two first round picks, three second round picks, two third round picks. I mean, look at all this up here. They used to have that Edmonton pick. Look how many draft picks they have. And even next year too. If you can spend to get a player um, of like Nick Letty's ability, then maybe you do it. Maybe it's something where even you go at the deadline, you flip them again, right? But are you going to get a second round pick from back at that point? I, that's where I kind of go, you, you know, Eiserman set himself up for a little disappointment here. Um, is it something where he looks at Nick Letty and goes, you know what, this could be kind of my veteran defenseman that I can re-sign for a few years to a, like a decent deal where maybe he's only making three mil, three and a half mil, and I can sign him for two, three years and he can kind of move up and down the lineup, but he's my veteran guy. Um, because really, if you look at it, I don't think Danny, the Kaiser is really that guy. Um, maybe Nick Letty can be the kind of that replacement part. You really see Eiserman trying to get his guys in there and put his stamp on the team. And he's made a ton of trades, more trades than Ken Holland has ever made in his life. Like it just looking at how quickly he's turning this roster over. Um, I, I do understand it. I think it's just, I think people are looking at this as just a cap dump and it isn't. I, I think he's looking at Nick Letty as maybe a piece that he's going to keep for a while and looking at his stats 56 games he had 31 points you know and i mean new york is more of a defensive team i mean let's just ignore 17 18 because they were just dog water <laughs> he's minus 42 <laughs> but you know he has that that playmaking ability right i mean i whenever i see a defenseman with like two three four goals but they have a ton of assists i'm just thinking like this guy's probably got the best breakout pass he just makes the right play he's just solid right so um, now those numbers might look a little bit uglier next year with Detroit, but again, he's going to get maybe some more opportunity um, to be on the ice a little bit more. Cause I don't know who you put on the ice more than him. If you look at this, this Red Wings defense as it stands right now, cause it ain't to Kaiser or Stetcher or stall. It's probably Hronik, but that that's it. 
you know, and he's a right hand shot. So you, you got your top pairs, Heronic and, and Nick Letty, like, you know, they're still not going to be that good unless something happens, you know, you make some trades at the expansion draft, or you make some deals at the entry draft and then you have free agency and you never know who you can, you know, sign in here. And we're actually forgetting, you know, Mo Sider is going to be here too. Right. So he's going to be probably their best defenseman and he's not really in this right now. I don't think he's down here, is he? There he is. Big Mo. So he'll he'll be there too. Uh, none of these guys, I don't think, are really ready to, to be in there. But yeah, it, I, so I think it's it's kind of a, 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 I would say a win-win. I mean, if you really think about it from Detroit's perspective and you look at it like maybe they're going to bring him back and, and Iserman has identified him as this might be like a guy I want to hang on to for more than just this year. That's where it makes sense to me. If it's something where he's like, I'm going to flip him at the deadline, then this just makes no sense. Cause then why are you giving up a second round pick? That's how I look at it. So anyway, Nick Letty's a red wing. Uh, let's see what else Stevie can do. That's all I got.